Welcome to the Shields on Hoops podcast. I don't know what number this is, but I know this is game number seven of the season for Syracuse. If you want to count that Chaminade game as a game. Uh, Syracuse left Maui with a win after just that kind of throttling of Chaminade. Um, uh, we've talked about you know, Tennessee and Gonzaga, and uh, we got two of the probably three toughest challenges of the season out of the way. Duke still awaits. Uh, Carolina is going to be a tough one, obviously. UVA will be tough, uh, but those are the those are the big dogs left. Um, at this point, Syracuse is sitting at the 125, 130 range in Ken Palm, and they'll face mostly for the rest of the way teams in that 50 to 90 range or so. You know, you got your outliers there, like I said, Duke, Carolina, UVA. Um, on the other side, you got Boston, Georgia Tech, and those guys. Uh, Georgetown's not doing so hot right now. Uh, Niagara. Yeah, Niagara as well. And you also got Oregon um, coming up. So you got – but most games are in that kind of range where Syracuse is not going to be probably favored to win, but they're games they can win, uh, which is a nice feeling. Um, I, I was trying to be positive. I didn't – I this Maui went exactly how I thought it would go. Um, I'm not saying the games went the way I thought they would go, but the results were. I figured they'd lose – 15 20 to both those games and then they'd smack Chaminade around um and maybe you know maybe get lucky and uh Syracuse again like we like we like it's been spoken of plenty at this point played well for the most played well enough to be in the game to where if they could have made one run or strung together some some a little bit better of a defensive performance uh things might have been different this could be a different conversation right now they were you know two three possessions out of both those games late in those games and um, yeah, so positives to take from it. Uh, plenty of positives, plenty of negatives. Now we get to see what Coach Autry and company did over the last couple of weeks, or last couple of days, and it's not against a Final Four potential team, right? Like we get to see a little more of a level playing field to where Syracuse is not going to be overmatched as much. Um, LSU is plenty talented, not saying that at all, but they won't be in a situation where it's like, oh, God, we're playing – Tennessee or Kentucky or you know it's it's it's, it's going to be a, a winnable a winnable but challenging game for sure right Vegas right now sees it pretty much as a pick them or LSU with a slight advantage uh, so it uh, should be a fun game um, I, I love these challenge games um, I, for some reason this game kind of get, get, I don't know why but I just keep having flashbacks to that Indiana game in the dome a couple of years oh ago God. that, that was, was really fun yeah so I, I that's the kind of vibe I have of this game just the way LSU plays and we'll talk about that in the way Syracuse plays. Like, I think this has a potential to be a really fun game. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously here with Nick Peckham, like I always am. Forgot to introduce my man today, uh, Nick. Why don't you jump on in and, and give us your uh, just kind of quick thoughts about either maybe some maybe maybe a quick some a quick thought or two about Maui now that it's done and we're moved on, um, and then maybe jump into what you think of LSU um, off the jump. Yeah, I mean, uh, we talked a lot before Maui. Um, one and two was what we talked about a lot with Syracuse. Uh, probably losing their first two games and then smacking around Chaminade like they did. Um, so the record was what it was. You're four and two. Um, you got very good experience playing against Tennessee and Gonzaga. Um, now you just got to put that into the rest of the season. So we played these two teams, two potential Final Four teams, um, at least Elite Eight teams at that matter. Uh, you played them tough down to the right, the the wire. Tennessee was a five-minute mark uh, when they kind of went on their 12-0 run, and then Gonzaga was the eight-minute mark when they went on a 19-2 run. So you played tough. You were in the game. Now let's see what you did the last, what, week? I think they got home Friday. So mm -hmm. I'm sure they practiced over the weekend, practiced yeah. today. They'll have a walkthrough tomorrow morning, and then they tip tomorrow night. So we'll see what they worked on, what they got from Maui and things like that. Um don't take too much from the Chaminade game. Um, they did what they were supposed to do. Um, it's a what well, I think they're well, a, a high D two school at that rate. I don't even know if they're a D one school yet. I don't um, know if they're a good D two school, but yeah. But you, you did what you were supposed to do. Everybody played well. Um, you went in, you took care of business early, and you knocked them out, and that was it. Um, so. It was a good ending for Syracuse and Maui for sure. But now the real test start. You have LSU today, and then I think uh, the next game is against Virginia. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's at Virginia, right? Yep, I will be there. 
So, um, I mean, at the end of the day, let's see what work you put in. Um, like you mentioned, LSU is not a walkover opponent. Um, they're definitely going to fight. Um, it's going to be a good game. Um, it's ACC SEC challenge. So um, let's see what the ACC can do in this thing. Um, the First SEC. year, right? First year, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, the SEC has some very good teams this year. Um, they're probably deep, like top to bottom deep, um, like they were last year as well. So it should be an interesting challenge. Um, Syracuse got the LSU call. Um, thank God we're at the Dome. Um, I think that might that might play a part uh, in this game down the stretch if it's close. But just looking at LSU's last game, um, they played UNF. They won 75-63. Um, they didn't really shoot the ball too well. They were 4-14 from three. Uh, they got to the line 32 times as opposed to uh, UNF only getting to the line 10 times in the whole game. That's 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 been a trademark for LSU all year. They get to the line a lot. They shoot a lot of free throws. Yeah, um, they out-rebounded them by seven. Um, they had 15 turnovers. Um, they averaged about 13 on the season, so right around their mark. Uh, they had nine blocks to UNF's two. Uh, that is also something they averaged double digits in as a team as blocks. I think it's like 10.2 on the season. Mm -hmm. But um, at LSU is going to come in. They're going to want to win this game. They are also 4-2. and two. Um, So... Syracuse isn't going to come in and just lay the horn down. If they do, um, it'll be a very impressive win if they can do that. But um, it'll be. I'm very interested to see um, what team comes out after this Maui trip. Um, I know they stayed there Thursday for Thanksgiving, so that I, they flew home Thursday night, Friday morning. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a little bit about LSU to to j jump off of that. Uh, Syracuse, this is the second time these teams have ever played, uh, which is interesting to me. Syracuse played them in the Dome in 1985, uh, won that one by 12. So this is just this is round two in the uh, in the Syracuse LSU matchup. Uh, LSU, uh, they are currently uh, well as of this morning. I haven't checked it since, but they were 72 in Ken Palm and this morning. Uh, Syracuse is sitting at 129. Ken Palm has a 77-55 win score prediction for the Tigers. A fifty-five percent chance of winning, which is you know pretty much a toss-up. Um, they schedule-wise, right? So they lost to Nichols State at home. That was an upset. Uh, Nichols was two fifty-nine. Ken Palm don't really know what happened there. They blew a fifteen-point lead against Dayton, who is number sixty-nine, um, with nine minutes to go in the second half. So they're about fifteen under the ten-minute mark and found a way to blow it. Um, they had some cupcake wins. They beat Mississippi Valley State. They beat North Florida. But they also have two um, solid top 90 or top 100 wins, right? They, they have a win over uh, 74 North Texas, who was pretty good last year. They either won or uh, were runner-up in the NIT, I think. And then uh, 81 Wake Forest. I think Wake was without a guy or two. Uh, but I, wa I watched a lot of that game and um, had some thoughts on them after seeing them on film. So they've got a, a, a kind of a mixed bag resume. Uh, like I said, it, it is kind of indicative of how they play offensively. Uh, they they sometimes they look like world beaters, and they got guys who can play. And sometimes it's just a mess, right? <laughs> sometimes it's just balls flying everywhere, bad shots, a lot of randomness. And sometimes it is just it's just flowing and clicking. So I feel like that resume is pretty much on point with them. Uh, they're top 100 in offense and defense, 87th best offense, 58th best defense in the country. I mean, these are these are from Monday morning, so these don't take into account whatever happened tonight. Uh, a couple things they're good at. Really good at turning teams over. And Syracuse has been really good at taking care of the ball. So uh, right now they are 19th in the country at forcing turnovers, which is pretty high clip. Uh, they get to the free throw line a lot. They're 23rd in the country at that. They're great at defending twos, 15th. And we know Syracuse just a lot of, shoots a lot of twos. Uh, they're top 10 in both steals and blocked shots as far as percentages go. So they're very active. They're very athletic. Um, they're going to try and be disruptive defensively uh, and hopefully turn a lot of that defense into offense. So if Syracuse takes care of the – Syracuse taking care of the ball is going to be a very, very interesting thing to track. Um, and it's kind of funny. They, they turn people over a lot, but they also turn it over a ton. So, like I said, that's one of the reasons I think this, is, this could be a very interesting game is – uh, there might be a little bit of turnovers and some up and down, which I think would be a lot of fun. So 
that's a little bit about them number wise and how they kind of do things. Um, personnel wise. All right. I'll jump in and they'll let you hop in after that. Um, best players, Will Baker, uh, former Texas guy, went to Nevada, five-star recruit. Uh, he's, uh, playing his last year for the Tigers and he's, he's good, man. Uh, seven footer lefty soft touch. He can kind of play. He doesn't shoot a ton of threes, but he's, he's five for 10 on the year, um, in six games. Uh, so he shoots like one or two a game, but he's five or 10. Um, he's not afraid to shoot it. If you let him 16.3 points, 6.5 rebounds, 87.5% from the free throw line. So he's a big who I think he's like 245 as well. He's a big who, can it can bang they run a lot of I think he, he kind of reminds me of a keegan records but a little more skilled and can go get his own a little bit better uh he's got a little bit more in his offensive arsenal the ball is in his hands a lot for a big all right it's in his hands a lot for a big but again everything kind of flows through him um a lot of pick and rolls a lot of handoffs uh he's he's a banger he's a matchup that bothers me a little bit as well just because i'm not sure who or how syracuse matches with him because it, I can't see Naheem being able to, to guard him um, just because he can take you outside. And then he's just so much bigger and more physical than Malik. Um, you know, uh, uh, mentally stable and mentally healthy Benny would be nice to see, like if he's tuned in and, and ready to roll. Um, I think that's probably the best matchup. But again, they they got size in other spots too. Um, they, they start seven foot, 6'10", 6'10", 6'10", 6'10", off the bench. So the size is going to be something that's going to be interesting. Um, it's it's going to be, I think it's going to kind of come down to maybe who plays better, Syracuse's guards or LSU's bigs. When it's all said and done. Um, but yeah, so Will Baker's the the main big guy. They got Jordan Wright. He came from Vanderbilt. He's kind of a, a forward uh, who does a little bit for, a little bit of everything for them. He averages ten and five. And then their next the last player um, that's pretty solid is Jalen Reed. He's six ten and smooth and, and physical. So they're physical. Their best players are their three, their four, and their five man. Um, and yeah, they 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 love to feed those guys and, and play through them. So it's a little bit on the personnel um, for their for their bigs and kind of how how kind of how how LSU wants to to do things and operate. Yeah, just to piggyback off what you said, uh, Will Baker is a nightmare matchup for the most part, um, especially this Syracuse team. Um, but one thing that I noticed looking at stats and just reading up on LSU and everything like that, um, LSU has uh, – when, when when people talk about LSU, they have two ma- major issues that are concerning to um, college basketball analysts. One of them is they average almost 13 turnovers per game. Um, and outside of Jordan Wright, who you just mentioned, nobody on the team averages more than two assists a game. Yeah, um, They average 10 as a team. 10 as a team in college is – pretty low. Um, so they don't really move the ball too much. Um, it's a lot of feeding Will Baker going one-on-one and kind of playing off of that for the most part. Um, when you think of this team, think of like what we saw Tennessee wise with the size up front, but without the guards. So like you saw Josiah Jordan James and, um, Adu and, um, Meshack and things like that. So the size up front, but they don't have the level of guards that Tennessee has. So like you said, I think it's going to come down to who plays better is JJ Judah and maybe Kyle off the bench. Um, if they can play like they did um, for the most part in Maui, I mean, for the most part, they played pretty good. Um, if they can play like that, I think Syracuse comes away with this game at the end. Um, but we got a rebound. Uh, we have to crash the glass um, as a team. Don't leak out. Don't all five guys put a body on somebody and go to the offensive gl- or go to the defensive glass and rebound the ball. Um, like you said, hopefully Benny plays. I mean, he played against Shamanad. He looked really good. He didn't really score a lot, but there was one um, possession I'll point out that really stood out to me when he dove for a loose ball um, and came back and swatted the thing into the third row. Um, got a tee, a uh, very soft technical, um, very staring soft. at the guy when he blocked the shot, but. That's the type of player that Syracuse needs out of Benny. So um, it'll be interesting to see uh, lineups and, like you said, how they guard Will Baker. If they're in man and they kind of start with Naheem on him to see what he can do. Um, do they hedge when he catches the ball in the post? Um, obviously, they're uh, what you said, they're top, what, 40, top 50 in three-point shooting. 
yeah, I think, yeah. Around so, that top, top I mean, thing, they I can knock him down if you let – I mean, most guys, if you leave them wide open, can knock down a three hair or there. But it'll be interesting to see, do they double? Do they kind of just let Naheem go one-on-one and take everybody else out of the game? Um, it'll be very interesting to see what the coaching staff has for that game plan. But I think ultimately it's going to come down to how Judah and JJ play. Um, if they can give you, we'll say, combined um, – anywhere between, we'll say, 38 and, like, 42, 43 points. I think Syracuse runs away with this game at the end. Yeah, and like you said about three-point shooting, um, so, like, their guards aren't, like, super – like they're not going to put the game on their shoulders and make plays. Um, we got some guys who can get to the rim and some guys who can shoot it, but they don't have, like, the dynamic playmaker yet like Syracuse has in, in J.J. and Judah. Um, they do have – I mean, they do have you know, Jordan Wright is shooting 34.8% from three. Carlos Stewart is shooting 35.7. Tyrell Ward is shooting nine for 21. So they got guys who can shoot it. Um, and almost all of them will pull the trigger outside of one or two guys. Um, out of there, I think in the top seven, um, all those guys will shoot it. So they got guys who, who are not afraid to shoot it. And also what's interesting about them, the uh, Wright, Baker, and Reed are all shooting over 72% from the foul line, right? And they've all... They're all averaging five, six free throws a game. So that's going to be interesting. If, if Syracuse can keep those guys off the foul line, it's going to be really important um, as well. So there's like a lot of there's a lot of little games within the games and how like the statistics kind of contrast in this one. Uh, one speaking of the guards, go ahead. One interesting fact, uh, speaking of LSU, we mentioned they don't really have that go-to guy on the perimeter and things like that. Um, Joe Girard came down to LSU and Clemson right. when he made his decision. So – um, clearly they were after a guy who could shoot the ball and things like that. So it, that's just one interesting fact that this could be a, the homecoming game for Joe Gerard, but that'll be in a couple weeks when we play Clemson. So yeah, that, that is interesting. I wonder, yeah, I'm trying to see where he would have fit on this roster. I mean, he, he would have played a ton. Um, yeah, he probably would have taken some of the freshman's minutes and uh, I, I totally forgot about that. That's a, that's a great point. Um, yeah. So we would have gotten, we would have gotten Joe regardless. Um, so, yeah, so Carlos Stewart, um, he's one of their guards. He transferred over from Santa Clara. Uh, shot around 40% last year from three. A little bit down this year, but he's only taken 14 threes. He averaged like 15 and a half last year at Santa Clara. Um, so kind of getting less shooting at a, at a different uh, school. Tyrell Ward's been their best ones. That's a name to look out for. Um, he's he'll be, he'll be shooting it. And Mike Williams is their point guard. He's a freshman. He's a top 125 guy. Um averaging 6.7 and 2.5 steals, which that's that's a lot of steals in like 20 minutes a game. So that, is, um, I think Syracuse was, if I remember correctly, I think Syracuse was in on him. Were they? As a guard, yeah. He's, he's, from so. Mary, yeah, he's a DMV guy, so probably, yeah, probably. I think he's a Maryland guy. So um, I like his game. He's he's shifty. He's quick with it. You can tell he's trying to get his pace down on D1, but I think he's going to be pretty good when it's all said and done. Um, so, yeah, those are their guards. Nothing too crazy um, from those guys. Uh, but they're they're kind of there to to three and D right. They're there to they're there to hit open shots and they're there to wreak havoc defensively um, and make plays. Um, yeah. So I mean, statistically, LSU is better than Syracuse in just about everything right now. Um, and again, we realize it's a small sample size, uh, but I mean, it's not like their competition has been stiffer. Um, I mean, Syracuse has, you know, they got, they got those two tough games against Tennessee and Gonzaga, but it's not like LSU's played nobody either. So it's probably fairly indicative of who, who they are. Um, they force a lot of turnovers. They get a decent amount of offensive rebound. They get to the foul line a ton. Um, those are the main things that I kind of see that are the most worrisome for Syracuse. Um, and again, I when, like one of the games within the games, like I said earlier, is going to be, can Syracuse, who, who who has been taking care of the ball pretty well, right? Can they continue to do that against the top twenty turnover forcing team in the country right now? Um, that's going to be very interesting um, to see. I think Syracuse is going to turn them over because again they're very loose with the ball, and Syracuse has been turning teams over. So, um, like I like I said, I, I think there's going to be a lot of kind of turnovers and, and transition basketball in this one, and uh, hopefully Syracuse shores up some of those transition defense issues they had and. Um, yeah, I, I expect this one to be kind of a track meet. Um, honestly, I, I know, I know LSU is not super high in tempo, but Syracuse kind of is right now. 
Um, and I expect that to go up just with the fact that both teams have the propensity to like kind of force a lot of turnovers. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to, to see if Syracuse can take care of the ball, um, keep LSU off the free throw line. And honestly, um, I know I harp on this a lot with the Syracuse team, but I think one thing that they should do and look to do is obviously Naheem's probably going to start um, at the center position. Yeah. Um, and LSU seems to play a lot of man to man. Go pick and rolls with JJ and Judah and let them go downhill and see if you can get Will Baker and fall trouble early or just just the little things like that. Like take their best player off the floor if you can. And that's what a lot of teams like you notice Tennessee, Gonzaga in the first half, they kind of did that with Judah. Um, they went at him on the defensive end. He kind of got lazy at times, gave up baskets, got in fall trouble. And they kind of took like the Tennessee game. He sat what? Almost 14 minutes in the first half. Yeah. And unless Judah is silly, I don't, I don't think they have the guys to exploit him or do no. that way. Like maybe Williams can get to the rim a little bit, but beyond Williams, I don't, I don't know. They have, they don't have the dynamic type penetrator to, to do that as much. And really a lot of their pick and rolls, they kind of use, is it reader, right? Um, Jordan, right? Yeah. They use right in a lot of the pick and rolls. Um, with uh, Baker and obviously they use the guards too, but they got, they really play through those, those three uh, quote unquote bigs. Um, I will say this wake did play some zone against LSU in that game. And it kind of threw LSU off a little bit at times. I thought wake did a good job of like mixing it in. Uh, but I think you'll see that with Syracuse, the zone man press, Maybe even like a matchup zone here and there. I think the more the season goes on, I think you'll see more variety. Just because, well, hold on. Let me get that. So yeah. So back. To, so let me come back to that. So yeah. Wake. Um, they played zone and LSU struggled a little bit here and there, but you could see after the halftime break, they kind of ran some stuff that was was pretty effective. And the thing about it was, they started getting the ball to Baker in the short corner and on the post, and then it was like it's over. Like, like it's done, um, but yeah, I, I I do think that uh, I do think that uh, Syracuse needs to continue to mix that up and throw some variety in there. I think it makes the most sense. Uh, I, I I like I like I've said a couple times now. You you don't just figure man to man out just because you decide. Oh, we're just going to play man to man now. Like no. teams are too good. They run too great of stuff. Like it's not, it's not, it's not like you're playing pickup at the rec center and you're like, oh, let's let's play man this time. Like no, or let's play so it doesn't work that way. Um, teams are too good, right? Team, coaches are too good. So, um, and like you just have to be, you just have to be well versed in in your de defensive philosophy. And Syracuse obviously is not that right now. They were they right now they are relying on their athleticism like they were in their in the scrimmages or exhibitions, in the in the scrub early schedule. And it, it doesn't work against those teams. The problem then becomes like, okay, well, we're working on man, so we're not working on the zone as much. And the zone was bad anyway. So now we're spending less time working on the zone. And we go to that and we go to the zone. So it's obviously not going to be as good either. So it's just kind of like finding that balance of what works for them and uh, mixing things up. I'm still waiting for the day that they just press to press, not, not to turn teams over, not to do anything crazy, just to burn some shot clock. I, I, I I would love to see that. I, there, see I that. think with this team, it's their best option at this point. They're not going to do it, though, man. They're not going to do it. Especially they with it. how they deep they're going to play. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. I will say uh, you will probably see uh, Moni or Hima tomorrow night at some point um, if Naheem can't do anything or if Naheem gets in fall trouble. Um, like you mentioned, I just think their size is too much, so you're going to have to play another center. You're not going to get away with Malik Brown playing at the five a whole lot. Yeah, it's um, not It's not even that they have size. It's that they have skilled size. Um, that's, that's, that's the bigger problem. Yeah, so um, the next interesting point that I'll bring up is um, the starting lineup. Um, and what we see, um, I would guess – that we see the same starting five that we've seen since the second ex exhibition game. Um, I don't know if maybe Benny gets slides into that four and Justin Taylor moves to the bench. Um, is this the game you do that or do you wait? Um, but I think that'll be another interesting point to f 
find out tomorrow night. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know. I think I think maybe Taylor in the starting lineup might have run its course after those two Tennessee Gonzaga get those two games. Like, and I, I love Justin Taylor's game. I think he's going to be a good player. But like right now, again, and I, it depends how practice probably went. Like, I'm, I'm not also not super confident in putting Benny in there either. So no, no, like, no, 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 you know no. what I mean. Like it's just like so like it's just this is kind of a weird fourth spot. Like I'm obviously confident with the other. I'm confident with Judah, JJ, and Bell. Naheem is just kind of there by default right now. Um, I mean, you could start Malik, but man, that would that would make us really undersized. Um, the, and again, the problem with this team is there's there's no bangers. Like there's there are no bangers on this roster. Like they 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 just don't exist. Like and Benny isn't even really. He's just. Kind of, I mean, really, they we haven't had one in. Like I wouldn't really call Jesse Edwards last year. Like I know he got in the paint, no, but I wouldn't no, call him a banger. But like we really haven't had one in. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna sit here and think about it, but like the last one that comes to mind is Arenze Onowaku. This team, yeah. I mean, this team needs a Tyler Roberson. Is what this team yeah, needs. Yeah, yeah. They need a Tyler. They, they need they need a Roberson. They need um, a guy who's gonna just do his thing and mix it up. Like, but they don't have a mix it up guy. I mean, like, they, I mean, they had that. Benny, think, years Benny, ago with, Benny, Benny thinks he is that guy. No, not he's close. Big, but he's not that guy. Like. I mean, Michael oh Benege kind of did that at the guard position. True, he's a, he was kind of he was kind of a bully at the guard position. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, Tyler Roberson was kind of that guy. Um, even like undersized and skinny, uh, Dolage kind of yeah, banged it up here and there and got after it. Okay, let me ask you this question then. All right, so we got a little bit of time. Um, if you if you were going to, if you if it was you and one Syracuse player in a fight for your life. A brawl. Who who are you taking? Who? That's tough. That's the right there. That's the problem. That the hesitation right there is the issue that I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying. I don't know either. Probably JJ. Maybe maybe JJ. Like on this this team right here. This team right here. Or like overall. This team right here. This team right here. Who are you picking to save your life? Shit. Um. That's a tough question. Um, I mean, JJ is a good answer. Um, it's got to be JJ or Judah. And I don't love either of those answers, honestly. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Malik Brown. Maybe. But like, I don't know if he. <laughs> no way, dude. No. That's no. a tough question. Now, if you ask me like overall Syracuse, I have okay, two guys yeah. in mind Paul Harris yeah. or Eric Devendorf. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. they're gonna go to war with you, like. <laughs> I mean, but but again, you can, and this might be the this might be the, the test, right? Like even last year, who's 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 in that fight with you? Nobody. These teams who have not the like, teams who have underperformed, have not, yeah, the teams who have underperformed and not played well, they don't have anybody who. Obviously, this is not the only thing you need to be to win, but like who, who are you? My high school coach used to say. Uh, like who 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 are you going to have in the foxhole with you, right? Like, if it was if it really came down to it and it really hit the fan, like, who would you turn to? Are you that guy, or do you know who that guy is on your team? Who you would turn to? And I, I don't know who that is. I, I mean, I, I think guess like you said, I guess they want it. Do they want it to be Benny? Yeah, that's yeah. So I, I think I think the answer on this team, wrong, right, or indifferent, is Judah or JJ. But Benny has, and this is, and this is in the whole thing with Benny. Benny has the potential to be that guy, and I think if you like set Benny off and like pissed him off enough, maybe he would be that guy. But like, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about in general. Like, who are yeah. you going to battle with if you? I guess you'd have to go JJ right now, JJ. I think it would be JJ. Yeah, I think Judah's probably close second. Um, but beyond oh. that. <laughs> Um, an interesting but, point I will bring up though. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold that. So I'm I'm gonna roll here. So now when you but now okay, when you turn on when you watch Tennessee play, there's a couple dudes. Mm-hmm. When you watch Gonzaga play, couple there's dudes. A couple dudes. When you turn on Duke and Carolina, couple dudes. Right? Um, uh, that's, Armando Baker. That's the that's the difference. That's one of the differences right now. And I think Donnie Freeman might be that dude. Okay. 
I mean, um, Elijah. Let's not forget Elijah Morris from New York City. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying the way not, the way the way I've seen Freeman play, and like he just seems like a physical kind, of, and he might be that guy coming in. But this, yeah, I think I think that's a very interesting. I guess the first I thought about it was was the last like five minutes about who you who are you taking in a street fight with you. Um, but all right, anyway, go ahead. What do you got? What's up? Um, interesting point I'll bring out. Um, I don't know if it means anything. Um, obviously, but in the second half of the Shamanad game, um, it started to seem like Justin Taylor and Kyle Cuff kind of found their rhythm and found their their shooting. Um, obviously, in a game like that, you look for like the little things that you can take from this game and move forward with. Um, it was nice to see Justin Taylor kind of get hot there for a little bit after going what like the first like what do they say 68 minutes of Maui and not having a point yeah um, he hit a couple threes Kyle kind of hit a couple threes got downhill so like if you're gonna take little things away from this obviously it was a blowout they won by I don't know what 50 or something like 100. that um you th- but like guys kind of finding a rhythm um finding their shot um is obviously a nice thing you can take away um obviously Naheem I know, again, you're playing a team that is very undersized, but, like, Naheem just being a part of an offense just yeah. kind of helps him in the long run and things like that. But, um, yeah, that was one thing. Oh, they won by 49. Uh, but that was, like, one thing I noticed. Um, like, I think Justin, he was 5 of 14, 3 of 9 from 3, but he got hot in the second half. Yeah. I mean, listen, you won. You scored 105 points and won by 49, and Judah Mintz scored four points. Yep. <laughs> So like Judah really didn't get involved. JJ only had twelve. Um, obviously, like Copeland was one rebound and two assists shy from a triple double and had a great game. Um, he was all over the place. But like the little things that you just take away, um, guys hitting shots, guys finding a rhythm. Um, hopefully that carries over into tomorrow night or whenever we post this on Tuesday night. Um, that that'll be a huge thing because we've talked about it, but. Chris Bell and Justin hitting threes is going to take this team a lot further than them not hitting threes. Yeah, for sure. I think it definitely, I mean, I, I make fun, but I think the Shamanad game, I think nothing but positive things came out of that. You know, they got to leave. Enjoy Thanksgiving with a win. Don't care who it is. You dropped 100 points. Don't care who it is. Um, it feels good. I've been on teams that, you know, have, have kind of, you know, needed a game like that. And uh, it, it's nothing but positive things for sure. Um, all right, let's talk predictions and get out of here. What you got? Uh, what you got? So we'll do our lovely spread uh, right now on ESPN. As of right now, it's one and uh, plus one and a half LSU, and the over under is one fifty point five. Um, so I'm gonna go over one fifty point five. Uh, like you said, I think these teams are gonna turn each other over. Um, I know Syracuse doesn't turn the ball over at a high rate, but LSU does. I think Syracuse kind of playing fast. They're going to get into some of these stupid turnovers that they have every now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's definitely over 150 and a half. And I think Syracuse wins by eight. I'm going to go Syracuse by eight in this game. Whew. Okay. Um, I'm taking that over as well for sure. Uh, I'm going to take LSU in this one. I think that LSU, I think that I want to say Syracuse. I really do. I, 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 I will not be surprised on any level whatsoever if you're right, actually. Like, if Syracuse comes out and plays really, I will not be surprised. Um, but I think if – I'm a numbers guy, right? If I look at these numbers and I know they can lie, I think that the LSU size is going to make life tough for Judah and JJ if when they do get in the inside – um, it's going to get hard from this finished. Um, I think it's going to be hard for Syracuse to rebound well. And I think that, um, Chris Bell or Taylor or Judah are going to shoot, have, shoot well, really well from three if Syracuse wins this one. Um, but I think LSU's going to win, win a close one. I think it's going to be an, a really fun game. Um, and I hope I'm wrong, but like just again, looking at the numbers and stuff, I just kind of feel, I feel like that size, I feel like their size outweighs our guards. Um, but we'll see. I could be wrong. Um, you know, Baker Baker's had some good games and he's had, he's had some ugly games. Um, we'll see how he plays. But he's got a, he's got he's got a couple of nice matchups in this one. Um, that's my biggest worry is is kind of Baker and keeping them off the glass. Which again, Syracuse has not done a good job against New Hampshire or Colgate at keeping keeping teams off the glass. 
Um, so we'll see. Maybe they had great co a couple of days of practice and they shore some things up. Um, and and I'm wrong, but um, I'm going to go LSU on this one and take the over. I think the biggest thing that uh, we're going to take out of this win or lose um, is, I mean, obviously you can take a lot of things out if you lose, but uh, the play of Naheem McLeod. Um, this is a chance for him to um, go against a guy of Will Baker's caliber and really cement that center position moving forward and saying, hey, I, this is why I came here. I'm part of this team. And this, like, you're seven foot four, right? Like, there's not many guys in the country that have a guy that's seven foot four and physical. Like, he has the physical ability. Mm -hmm. Now he's just got to use it. And listen, I mean, Bill Walton raved about him for 40 minutes in the show in that game. I mean, okay. they, they had to have swapped numbers, right? <laughs> like, they, he, he's probably texting Bill Walton every night <laughs> nonsense about liking colors and stuff. Like, they, they got their boys now. They're boys now. He, no, listen, Nelson he's McLeod got, and Bill he Walton. Thinks, he thinks McLeod's going to make the NBA and be a, a, a starter no, for he years. He actually oh. legitimately does. <laughs> no, le legitimately. But uh, yeah. I think you're. I, I, I do. He's like, Raheem McLeod didn't make the all tournament team. <laughs> I think no, that. No, uh, um, I think our guards play well. Um, I think Justin and Chris hit just enough threes um, for this team to shoot a good percentage from the three point line. Um, and I just, I think this team's ready. Um, you have two losses. This is a big game for Syracuse, right? Like five and two going into UVA or four and three going into UVA is a huge difference. Um, I think they I think they lose this one and beat UVA. I mean they could win this one and beat UVA and be 62 right. and the the yeah. I'm telling you the the, the vibes the, would be high. The all vibes my, all, would be all high. All my Ken Pond people that want Syracuse higher, this is your opportunity right here the to get vibes high. would be high. The vibe man, they won these next two. We'll talk about that stretch maybe going into the UVA game, but yeah, the next four next four are 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 uh big. I think Syracuse has to go 3 and 1. Um, in these next four, two and two would be eh, three and That's one needs to happen because again, I mean, Cornell is going to end up being Cornell is going to be. I mean, sh shoot, right now, Cornell is. Um, if you look at Ken Palm, which you know, I'm going to. Uh, here's, here's a question for you while you look at Ken Palm. Yeah, we got a couple minutes left. Um, if Syracuse, let's say Syracuse goes two and two. What would be um, what would be your two wins and two losses that you look back at? Like, okay, that didn't really kill us. Uh, they can't lose to Cornell or Georgetown, dude. Like, it'd have to be LSU, UVA it'd losses, be, and then it'd win. It, uh, hey, shoot! All right, screw it. Let's throw in this Oregon game too. All right, so you got LSU, UVA. All right, so you got seventy-two LSU, forty-two Virginia, one hundred one Cornell, one sixty-nine Georgetown, fifty-one Oregon. I mean, you come out of that three and two, uh, and you lose to UVA, and we'll say UVA and Oregon because Oregon, I think, is at a neutral site. Yeah. Um, and you beat LSU, Georgetown, and Cornell, and you come out three two, and you are seven and four. I mean, that's not horrible. Um, obviously. Then you, you beat Niagara. You're eight and four, and then you start as ACC play. But then you have to finish top six in the ACC. Yeah. If you want, if you want to make the tournament, I mean, maybe, yeah. I mean, you got, you got Boston twice. You got Louisville once. You got Georgia Tech. You got, you got Louisville and Boston twice. So, by the way, did you see Jim Beheim was on the field of sixty eight last night? I, I, I still haven't listened to it yet. And I need to. I, I saw oh. some. I saw some quotes, but yeah, yeah I, I saw, listened my to favorite, some. Clips. My favorite quote was about how he doesn't miss coaching at all. <laughs> I mean, you could tell that the last five years coaching at Syracuse that probably so. <laughs> means it's time to go, my man. We love you, but it was probably probably a good sign. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, I think Syracuse needs to go three and two in that stretch, and LSU is the game that is the most winnable. That's doubtful, I think. So this is a big one. I mean, you're, yeah, you no, I think I think it's a right. very underrated big game. I don't like Oregon could be anything. UVA, the probably are supposed to lose. Like they're supposed to lose to UVA. They're supposed to lose to Oregon. Um, they're supposed to beat Cornell and Georgetown. The closest one, although Cornell is going to be close. Cornell's one on one right now in Ken Palm, by the way. Um, they're good. They're good. And then, yeah, they are. 
and then you that and that's that a, a chance for a, a big win. I mean, you got you got five teams right here, or well, four that could make the tournament. So now I'll throw this out right before we end. You keep saying that, and we keep talking. I know, I know. What if? <laughs> so what if Syracuse goes five and zero? Oh? Then we're dancing. <laughs> the team then they then they figured it out, and we're dancing. If this team, if bro, if this team it, goes five and zero oh in that stretch. Something clicked, and they are ready to rock. Yeah, Maui. Like, <laughs> yeah, Maui clicked. Yeah, Chaminade cl- clicked. Chaminade clicked. Um, if they beat LSU, UVA, Cornell, Georgetown, and Oregon, like yeah, yeah, they're they're going they're going to be okay. They, they, this will be Syracuse, right? They'll win those five, and then they'll lose to Niagara. Freaking go Niagara. five and one. It's like that Monmouth game last year. Remember? Oh my God. <laughs> That's what that's exactly it'll be a carbon copy of Monmouth. You know what? This game, I, I know you mentioned it earlier, but this kind of game kind of reminds me of the Indiana game a couple of years ago. And it kind of reminds me of I don't want to throw this out there because I have P, PTSD from this, but kind of reminds you of that Bryant game last year when Brian came to the dome. <laughs> Why? And Judah decided to punch Doug at her and get slap ejected him. or slap him. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know if I can pick. I don't know if I can pick Jude after that. After that memory now for my street fight. I don't know. He did slap a guy. I don't know if I can pick a guy. Who I know. You might have to go JJ. But <laughs> yeah, I mean tomorrow should be fun. Um, yeah. It's a big test for Syracuse for sure. Um, let's see what they learned from Maui. Let's see what they did when they got back in practice, and uh, let's hope for the best. Absolutely, should be a fun game. Um, all right. Well, that's it for us, guys. Um, thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share. Do what you do. Um, help us grow this thing. If you, if you like our opinion, maybe a friend of yours does as well. So um, leave us some comments, ask questions. We'd love to interact with you guys if that's something you guys would like to do as well. Um, on behalf of Nick Peckham, I'm Brandon Shields, and we are out of here. Have a good one.